Lord, we want your Holy Spirit to fill us. We want your Holy Spirit to lead us. Speak to us today, Lord. Father, we can we pray for those who are not yet to bring them in and those who cannot come. Father, speak to them where they are and bless them. Oh, Jesus. Have your way in our Lord. We ask you, God, to fill this place of your presence. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. There's no one like me. 
be at a service right after this service at uh, 3 o'clock. So you can hear this ministry at 3 o'clock. But we thank God for those of you who have come and this bucket right here already contains several cell phones in it that Apostle Hargan brought. So if anyone brought cell phones to donate for the mission effort, you can put them in this basket here. Put them gently, don't drop it. <laughs> Put it gently in there, all right? <laughs> and uh, we're, you know, we'll be collecting those later, though, so just hold on to them for now, because we want to hear the word of God. But I want to also invite everybody. Uh, now, starting in June, like I think June 24th or something like that, the last Saturday in June, we'll say. Oh, it's a long one. <laughs> the last Saturday in June, we're going to start every Saturday at 11 and Sunday at 11. So we have more opportunities to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So every Saturday and Sunday. We're going to start that June, like June, the last Saturday in June, just say like that. More opportunities to preach, more opportunities to invite other preachers to preach, and then those of us. Amen. And, but next Saturday, we'll do a preliminary Saturday at 11 service. So all are welcome to come for next Saturday at 11. I'll be bringing a message I preached on Facebook, Where is the Lord? But this is part two. Amen. It goes a little deeper. Where is the Lord? Amen. I don't know if this, some of you told me to sign. But uh, that'll be next Saturday at 11. And then we'll still be here Sunday. Pastor Benjamin will be ministering next time. Amen. Amen. And this time, let's stand on our feet. And let's clap our hands for Jesus Christ as his servant, Apostle Michael Hargett, comes. Amen. Everything that you 
deal with, with your spouse. There comes a time and, and I was taking our daughter and our son out and, and she didn't want to go. And I was a little frustrated. And when she came to talk to me about it, I was like, not now. I, I, I don't want to talk about it now. And right at that moment, God showed me what submit means. Because her points and what she wanted to say were valid. But I wasn't ready or needed to hear it at that time. So she submitted. Now, that's why this heartbeat thing. She submitted not to her heartbeat, but to mine. And let me have my moment with my son and my daughter. And we went. And there were some things, some walls that were up between me and my daughter that had to be torn down. That's why I'm saying, God, my heart. My heart. So publicly, again, I know I say this privately to my wife, but I thank you for loving me, for understanding to me, and submitting to me when I need that. Some folk think that means that you be domineering and overbearing on your wife, but sometimes submission is just holding your thoughts. And I validate what she had to say. It was important, but not just right there. So throughout your life, throughout your day, allow God, ah, mm, give God your heart in your heart beats. Come on, let's give God some praise right there. Amen. I give honor to the angel of this house, my brother, my friend, apostle man. I I can't tell you, I, I, I love him, I love you, and your wife, I love you guys, you are my brother and my sister. And we don't talk often, apostle, we, we don't, we don't, we don't talk often. And, and sometimes I get his name mixed up because he got two first names, Thomas Joseph. <laughs> and, but when he calls, I answer that call. Sometimes I'm at work and, and his Facebook post will pop up. He says, I'm going on in 15 minutes and I'm at work. And I can't actively engage, but I can put my earpiece in and just listen. Yeah. I learned so much from him. Amen. His trips to Africa, his trips are so important. We were sharing this morning how what we would consider to be trash, those cell phones in your drawer, the, the flip phones and the old apples and the old galaxies, bring them in. We're going to be collecting them all the way up, all the way up until we leave. We want his suitcases to be so heavy he's got to pay double and give all the money. <laughs> but what he's doing, and he invited me and my wife to Tanzania next, next year with him and his wife. And you know what? I'm going to commit. We're going. Amen. We're going. Amen. We're going. Hallelujah. We're going. We're going. It is a privilege and an honor to be here again with all of you. I am no stranger to this house. Amen. Amen. I thank Apostle Cook, our National Youth Director, Jamar Cook from Azusa Fire Ministry. Um, and I know he has to get to his services, so I'm going to do that because I definitely want him to espouse the word. Amen? Amen. Put something in the atmosphere for us. But I love what the apostle is doing. Did y'all catch that? By the end of last Saturday of June, we're going to be having services here Saturday. And because he wants to open it up. Come on, somebody. He, Amen. he wants more preachers to come. He wants more fellowship to come. He wants more partnerships to come. So you'll be seeing a lot more of us. And, and I'm glad he said that because after me and my wife were sitting there, she whispered over to me. She said, honey, we need to come here more often. And she was like, you know what? I wouldn't mind coming once a month. Can, can, can we do that? And we were having that come. Come on, somebody. Come on. Let's, let's just praise it. Because we just love the atmosphere when you walk in, the, the coffee set up, everyone coming in so friendly, so loving, so kind. The brother came over, spoke to us, sat down, opened up his Bible, started getting the word. The pastor back there was all the way, I don't know, though. I might have to step up my shirt game. <laughs> and then the pastor in the afternoon services, we, we look forward to fellowshipping with you. But it is just a delight to be here. And where's my man? He put his microphone down. He is oh, yeah. so very, 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 very,
<laughs> and the other young man that was working the, the, the video over here, making sure all the work goes, that's when you bring it in there and the youth that are coming in and, and where you are in the community, you are right in the right position. You are right where you're supposed to be. I went to bed last night and I said, God, what do you have for your people? And I heard nothing. I went to sleep. I heard nothing. I didn't have a dream. I had nothing. I woke up this morning. I said, God, give me a word. I'm waiting. I heard nothing. Mm. And my phone rang. And it was a friend of mine from New Jersey who came. To, 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 we were just chit-chatting. In the course of our conversation, God hit me with the word. Hit me with the word to give. Hit me with the scripture. Amen. And I am so excited because guess what? You are right where you're supposed to be. Amen. Ah, that's the word that I want to have this morning. Have, have you ever been in life sometimes and, and you've been out of position? Whether it was at work, at school, even in line at Walmart. Sometimes you can be in the wrong position. If you were in the wrong position when you're playing a sport like football or basketball, even tennis. I was watching my son, my junior, play tennis the other day, and, and he served the ball up. And when the other guy on the other field, on the other side of the tennis court, hit it back, my son's partner wasn't in position, and he missed the return. Sometimes in life, God will have you put in position, and you think that you ought not be there. Sometimes you think that you're in the wrong position. Sometimes at work, I'm going, what am I doing here? I, 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 I shouldn't be here. I'm in the wrong position. Uh -huh. When the doctors told me that I had cancer six months ago, and I began the, the cancer treatment, and, and when I went into the hospital to get the radiation treatment, the lady said, no, 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 you're not supposed to be sitting here. I got to move you over. You need to be over here. I was in the wrong position. Sometimes in life we feel that we're in the wrong position, but God will reposition you right where he needs you to be. Come on now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Think it not strange that you're in that job and everything around you seems to be topsy-turvy and folk just acting a fool and you walk into the room and the atmosphere shifts uh -huh. you're in the right position. All right. Sometimes when you're going through what you're going through, whether it's in your health, whether it's in finances, whether it's in relationships, uh, God has you there because you're in the right position. Uh, Amen. I'm beginning to understand that when you give your heart to God and yes. when you allow God to have every yes. single heartbeat, yes. sometimes the position you're in may be uncomfortable, but you're in the right position. Yes. 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 Ah. Yes, so right here in the book of Luke, Chapter 9. And I'm not going to be before you long. I'm going to try to make about three or four points and we'll get out of here. Amen. 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 Come on now. The book of Luke, chapter 9. Yes, I spoke at a at a friend of mine's church a few weeks ago. And he was out of town. And when I went in to preach for him, I preached. We were in and out in one hour. And his folks were so excited. They were like, man, we will never get <laughs> one hour. When you coming back? <laughs> the book of Luke chapter 9 and, and, and just verses 1 and 2 and again this was just given to me this morning literally check this out then he called his 12 disciples yeah, together yeah. Ah, right now. He, he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all Devil or devils over all devils and to cure diseases. He, he had to call his disciples together to what put them in position. Oh my God. Put them right where they were supposed to be. And not only did he put them in position, when he put them in position, he gave them power and authority over all devils and demons yeah. and to cure diseases. Yeah. Ah. Hallelujah. He had to put them in position with power and authority. That's right. And then after putting them in position in verse number two, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God uh -huh. and to heal the sick. Oh my God, somebody. When you give your heart to God and you give to every heartbeat and he's all belong to him, he's going to put you in position with power and authority over all demons, over all devils, over all circumstances. You're right where you're supposed hey. to be, Apostle. You are in the right position at the right time. 
Yeah. Woo. Right. Yes. I think about the man at the pool of Bethesda. He sat there at the pool of Bethesda watching everyone get in, watching everyone get out. And he yeah. sat there and watched it. Why? Because he was in the wrong position. Right. But when Jesus came along, oh my God, he put him right in the right position. Because he never had to get into the pool because he came in contact with this one called Jesus. Oh my God. Sometimes you got to wait at your pool of Bethesda so that you can have a Jesus encounter. Sometimes you got to stay in the right position. That's right. Then I think about the woman with the issue of blood. Come on, 12 years. She went around to all the doctors, spent all her money, but she had to get into the right position. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. When she saw Jesus, she understood that all she had to do was touch the hem of his garment. And by making that move, by moving from here to over there, she got in the right position. And to reach out and touch the hem of his garment, that's all she needed. Why? Because she had an encounter with Jesus, and she was in the right position. Amen. Man. We got to understand this thing. Yes. That in life, sometimes we feel that the position that we're in, sometimes we feel that where we are right now, that trap that we're in, that we're not supposed to be there. But there's a reason. Nah. I think about the soldier's daughter when he came into Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. The centurion. Yeah. He came up to Jesus and said, My baby is back there dead. Mm -hmm. He was in the right position. Because he positioned himself with Jesus. And Jesus said, no, your daughter ain't dead. She just sleep. Right. Why are you here? Yeah. Uh -huh. Go yeah. back home to her. Yeah. He sent him back home to get in the right position. Okay. Because by the time he got there, she was already okay. Come on, somebody. Yes. You got to be in the right position. And I'm beginning to understand that when you're sitting at the feet of Jesus, you're at the right position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Yeah. Every person in the Bible that had an encounter with Jesus, when they got into the right position, their lives would change forever. That's why I'm saying these folk that keep coming to the altar week in, week out, with the same issues and the same problems, something is wrong. It may not be them, but they're just not in the right position. They never got to the feet of Jesus. They never fully gave their heart to him. Because every single person in this, I think about Lazarus. Oh my God. Jesus walked over there. He said two words Lazarus, rise. And he got up. He got up. He was in the right position in the grave. Oh, oh. Ah. Amen. I think about the man on the cross, the thief on the cross. He was in the right position. He was getting ready to die, but he was at the side of Jesus. Yeah. And all he had to do was say, remember me. Woo. He was in the right position. Come on, man. Right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the woman, the woman, the woman, the woman that was bent over. She was hunchback and laying it and walking around. But once she got in the right position on the left side of Jesus, she stood straight up. Come on, man. Come on, man. You, you, you got to understand that, that your position with God may not look good to man. It may look like you a loser, but you really a winner. Come on, man. Yeah. count you out. Yeah. Count you dead. Yeah. Turn their back and walk yeah. away on you. Come on. But you need to stand your ground. Come Stay on. in your word. Stay in position. Yeah. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Woo. The blind man mm -hmm. uh, who couldn't see, uh -huh. bumping into things all his life, and he has an encounter with Jesus. Yeah. I, I love this story because Jesus was so unconventional. He picked up some dirt to make it mud. He spit in it, and then he put it on the man's eyes, uh -huh. and then the man could see. Right. Guess what? He was in the right position. Right. He was in the right position. Yeah. Because once he was blind, and now he can see. Yeah. I, I saw something else on Facebook just the other day. This woman said that there are certain folks in America that should never sing that song. Okay. That says, I was once blind, but now I can see. Because God saved a wretch 
like me and she said that there's no way black folk can be wretched. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, but if you haven't given your heart, if you haven't given your life, if you don't understand who Christ is, you are a wretch. I don't care what you say, what you think. I'm going to sing Amazing Grace. How sweet it is. Because he saved me. And once I got saved, I was put in the right position. Come on, somebody. There you go. We go through things in life. What about the possessed me? Oh my God, running through the cage, shackled. Folk holding down and holding on to him. And guess what? He came into an encounter with Jesus. Yeah. And then the demon said, why are you tormenting me? Yeah. Jesus didn't have to run around. He didn't have no plastic bags. He didn't have no delivery service. Just yeah. right there. He was in the right position to get what he needed. Come on. All this stuff that we're talking about, all this fuss that we're making up in the church, we need to get down to the real work of the church. Yes. What for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of God in Christ. That's what it is. That's what we need to be doing. Yeah. But we're so busy trying to do other stuff. We're so busy trying to do other things. We ain't trying to look out for one another. We're not trying to feed the poor. No. I thought about this the other day. No, okay. How do we go through society and charge people for things that God gave us for free. Mm -hmm. They're coming up with the carbon tax. Wow. They want to start charging us taxes for the air that we breathe. <laughs> and when you think about it, they charge us taxes on the income that we make. Yeah. And then what's left over when we go to stores, they charge us taxes on the food yeah, that we buy. Yeah, the yeah, food yeah, that we no, buy that no, God no, gave no, us no, for free. No, how, no. how do you charge us for water? It's a resource that God gave us free. How 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 do, how are we charged for the, the basic necessities of life? How do you charge folk for electricity? How do you charge folk for gas? How do you charge folk for the things that they need to live? Yeah. How do you charge folk? For the help of the Savior. Wow. Jesus said, I'm the truth, I'm the way, I'm the life. Yes. But you've got to be in position to receive it. Amen. You've got to be in position to understand it. You've got to be in position to accept it. Amen. Apostle, you were in the right position. Mm. Whether you're here, whether you're in the Congo, and brother, I don't want you to get discouraged. Because many folks will look and say, oh, this tiny little bitty place. Brother, you more full than some of the churches that I deal with way up there in Wisconsin. Uh, you got more views on your videos that we watch. And I don't always reply. I don't always say I like it. I don't always let you know that I'm there. But I want you to know that when you post up, even when I'm at work, I do my very best, if nothing else, just to listen. I want to be in position. I don't want to miss anything yes. that God gave you that was intended to get to me. Amen. And if you and your wife are inviting me and my wife to go to Tanzania with you next year, I got to be in position. Amen. I, I got I to gotta be ready to go. Yes. And you know, you ain't got to call. You just give me a, a ring and say, Brother Mike, I'm on my way. And we'll open up that garage door, and I open up the garage for him. I said, go in and get what you want, Apostle. He was like, what? 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 Wait, man. I said, no, go in and get what you want. I start throwing stuff in the truck, and he go, wait, slow down. I told his grandson, look, y'all grab. His grandson was like, can I have this? I was like, yeah, take that too. Amen. Because what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. And since I know I haven't placed the order with you yet, it's been a few months. I, my wife and I were talking about, I got to get my Mary Kay. Y'all think I look this good until I get my Mary Kay. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I got somebody that buys me. But I, I, I appreciate it. Not long message. Get in position. Get into your position. Amen. Understand why God has you there. There's a reason. Yes. There's a reason. Amen. Mike. You in the right position. 
Yeah. Brother, you played those drums the day like there was no tomorrow. I've heard, I've seen you play before, yeah, right. but there was a special anointing on you today. Yeah. Maybe you were trying to show off with your little brother back there. I don't know. Like, you maybe you said, maybe you were trying to say, you ain't getting these drums to you play like that. I don't know. Amen. But man, there was a special anointing over you. Amen. And since I told you this about all your children, they all carry a very special anointing on you. I watched how your daughter was handling her little brothers. They were all over her. They, they, they didn't let her for a minute. But she was patient. She was kind. She's in position. Yeah. There's greatness over all your children. Yeah. And I know sometimes it gets hard because you're in a position all by yourself and you feel like you're alone. Especially dealing with these crazy teenagers. <laughs> I got them. Because I saw this. Look at this. My junior, you know, look at my son. Look at him. He got big. You might have some competition, bro. These boys got some stuff. <laughs> Be encouraged. Amen. Don't you let up with your Bible school, with your teaching, because there's an anointing on him. When that baby stood here, when Grandpa gave him this mic, he would not let it go. He stood right here. He didn't know if he knew the words. He didn't know if he stood right here. You just keep it going. I love this. I, I, I love what you and your wife are doing for this community. I'm not a prophet. I'm not going to pretend to be a prophet. I'm going to get out of the way. Because I got a real prophet in the house. And I want him to put a word into the atmosphere for the church. Is, is that okay, Apostle? Amen. Is that okay? Amen. Apostle Cook, Prophet Cook, <laughs> teacher. Yeah. Did y'all get something out of that work today? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Amen. yeah. Just, just understand your position. Amen. Know who you are and why you are there. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Be encouraged, Angie. Amen. Amen. You in the right position. You're in the right position. Yeah. And don't think I haven't noticed that you haven't been broadcasting your Bible studies much. You used to get on a lot. <coughs> in the position. God wants to use you. He's not done yet. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm getting out of the way for the prophet. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together for my son, my, my, my partner, my brother from another mother, Apostle Prophet Jamar Amen. Jesus, somebody had a clap of praise. Yeah. Amen. You all come on and praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yeah. I bring you all greetings from the Azusa House of Fire Ministries. Yeah. Amen. Here in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Amen. And I want to give honor where honor is due. I thank and praise God for the set man of this house. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Apostle. Oh, Thomas. 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 All right. God bless you. And to your wife. Amen. Where is she at? Amen. God bless you, woman of God, and to all of the ministers and dignitaries that make up this fine place. Amen. God is good. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. And to my spiritual father, Amen. Apostle Michael Hager. Amen. God bless you. And also to his lovely wife. Amen. Sister Katie. Amen. I had told him that I was going to come. I want to exhort off of what the man of God was saying. Infirmity does not mean denial. My God, my God. Just because you have an infirmity, mm. it does not mean that God cannot use you in that infirmity. My God. Let's look at Moses. Mm. Moses had a speaking impediment, but he still allowed God to use him yeah. through his issue. Yeah. 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 So in this season, God is taking peculiar people that don't mind being used by him because you may have a slight infirmity. Mm. My infirmity only justifies the fact that God can use anybody. Oh! I love it! Yes. So, there's a shift that's taking place. 
with the church. And the church is about to be very, 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 mm, just the religious church. They're about to be blown because God is not about to just use just anybody just to be using them. Because give us, it's not about shape, it's not about formality, it's not about what you think that you have in your pocket. Come on, somebody. God, can you use me because I just want to be used for your glory? And so in this season of revival, in this season of shift, God is taking the least of these. He's taking the ones, man of God, that have been set on the backside of the desert. And I'm talking about people that really have a real word from God. I'm not talking about people that think that they know that they think that they got a word, but really, but there's no oil with that word. Come on, somebody. Get this. A word can only move me. But when that word is anointed by God, something has got to shift automatically. Why? Because what's down on the inside has got to testify to the fact of that God is truly using me for his glory. Yeah. Come on now. So, man of God, Apostle, I wasn't going to say this, but I wasn't going to do this. But when you said that you felt like jumping over the pulpit. <laughs> that leaped in my spirit. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me and he said to tell him that I'm renewing his strength for the nations. Oh! Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can everybody lift their hands in this place? Thank you, Lord. I feel God. God says, I'm renewing your strength. For the nations. God says I've given you strategy. And this strategy that I've given to you. It's going to be a testimony. That I will raise up anybody. God says that in this season. I'm refining not only the gift. But I'm refining the anointing on your life. Yes. God says that in this season, Apostle, as you allow me to take you and to shift you to where I'm at, God says that they shall begin to come from the north, south, east, and west. Think it not strange that you have secret warfare behind closed doors. God says that in this season, your secret warfare has only birth and it has produced an anointing that's going to testify to the nations. God says that as you get into a quiet place and as you get into a place of observance, God says, I shall begin to deal with you according to you. The Lord says, even according to your wife, pertaining to your wife, God says that there is another prayer mantle that he is going to reveal and give to her. Woman of God, stand up. Ah, Hallelujah. Ah, ah, oh. yes, yes, God, I feel yes. God in this place. I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. Lift your hands. Is it all right? God not only calls you friend, but he calls you prophetess to the nation. God is getting ready to birth another prayer wheel and a prayer mantle down on the inside. Woman of God, get ready to birth not only just sons, but God says you're getting ready to birth daughters. And the Lord says that as you begin to birth daughters, he said that you're going to birth them from your kind. God says your kind, why? Because you have a testimony for broken women. You have a testimony for the prostitutes. You have a testimony hey. for broken places. Oh. The Lord says as you begin to open up your mouth, and as you begin to, to declare what I say, God says that I'm going to shift everything. My God, my God. Everything. Yeah. And the Lord says that even these past three months, you have been in a place of transition. Yeah. And even in the Lord says that you have been in a place of transition. 
Katushe Rabai. God says this place of transition. It seems like it's an awkward place, but God says it is a necessary place. God says the gift and the anointing that's on your life. God says I'm going to thrust you into that appointed place. God says that as you begin to get quiet, even quieter the more, he says that there is, that there is, that there is another wave of power that he's getting ready to give to you. God says that as you begin to open up your spirit. Shut up. He says, I'm going to reveal. Sons from afar off, God says they're getting ready to come. Daughters from afar off, they're getting ready to come. Oh, ah. God says, just don't get settled in one place. Because the warfare that you and your husband have been going through is just not for this location. But there are another four locations that you are getting ready to birth. Uh, hey! Hallelujah! Yes, yes, I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. Everybody lift your hands. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The infirmity was necessary. What you had to encounter was necessary. Yes. What you had to encounter, what you had to go through was necessary. My God, my God. It was necessary. Somebody needs to know that on today. Yes. It was necessary. Yes. And Apostle, and as I relinquish this mic, the witchcraft that has been trying to come up against you and your wife, God says that is broken on today. Hey. Hey. God says that I will not But Jesus was. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that like right now? I mean, I mean to the T. Amen. God has God has made Himself known today. Hallelujah. And then I'm sure my wife will testify. But it, I mean, you're talking about heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah. That exactly what she's been going through. And everything you prophesied to me, I'm telling you, we've been praying. We're talking about other places. We, I brought that up a few weeks ago here. Yes, you did. And because God is putting it in, but God just really spoke. Amen. Let's clap our hands for the prophetic word of the apostles. Amen. Amen. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. Amen. Can I uh, play a 10 minute video of our ministry in Africa? Is that Amen. all right? Amen. 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 And then we'll, we'll get rid of the. Um, as we're watching this video, you can think about how we want to bless Apostle Arget. And um, also bring in any tithes, offerings to the church. And then if you have any cell phones and tablets today, but we, we still have about three weeks to go where you can bring in any cell phones, tablets, and things like that. Um, so we can bring it up there. We'll watch this quick video. This is just a quick video that shows... Um, that you would have to mother? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. My wife's getting on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and 
so this uh, this video just is like ten minutes. It just shows bits and pieces of what we do in Africa. You'll see Tanzania and then, and, and you'll see Congo. And um, yeah, let's just watch it real quick as we prepare to get. It. In Shirati, yeah. uh, at the district of Ronia. Wow. This is the second church, the third church in the town of Shirati. Wow. Yes. So God bless you for joining this work in prayer. Yeah. Because we believe that prayer can open all doors. Oh, yes. So God bless you so much for remember yeah. Tanzania in your prayer. Amen. And also remember the vision of Apostle Tom Amen. in your any time where you are. Remember Apostle Tom and Mushia in your prayer. Amen. Because the work they have in Tanzania and Africa is so big. Yes. But it needs a unit and big fellowship, partnership who can stand with the vision yes. and together the gospel can reach all corner of Tanzania, Amen. all corner of Africa, and all corner of worldwide. God bless you so much. I'm excited to share with you uh, not the word from, not coming from the United States, but coming from so I have a scripture. I'll start with the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 22. Just like this, with this tree. So 
ambayo inajitumainia kwamba kule Marekani ndio ingepata kanisa ambalo liko chini ya msingi. And you are very blessed with all the beautiful land that God created. Extol him that rideth on the heaven 
by his name John and rejoiced before him, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows, this God in his holy habitation. But so they didn't feel the Lord, but what they did, 
they just started organizing on their own, doing what they thought they could do, getting a committee together, and doing things just in their own strength. So they lost out with, with God until, you know, they would seek His face, amen? And God will definitely come. When you seek His face, you will find Him, amen? amen. <laughs> he likes to withdraw Himself, you know, from time to time, especially if you're going off track. So I'll be talking more about that next uh, Saturday. Well, this Saturday coming up. So at this time, let's get ready to be a blessing to the Apostle Harget and the deacons. Deacon Nehemiah. And uh, we'll say uh, Deacon Nehemiah will hold the basket, whatever we give for, for Apostle Harget. And let's see, what other deacon? Deacon, uh... Ken. Oh, yeah, there's Ken. Okay. Okay. I'll have Ken. Ken will hold the one for the church. Oh, yeah, Deacon Ken. Oh, deacon oh, Ken. Don't be shy, Deacon Ken. Ken. Ken's new at being a deacon. So. Come on. You can do it. You're in the right place at the right time. This is your position. Come on, Deacon. I'll also put on the screen... If anyone wants to get digitally, you can get digitally to the public size to Zell, Kesha, or to the website. And then, so be praying for us as we are preparing to go to Congo. It's a lot of work over there to do. And uh, we have the Father House Church over there. I'll be speaking. We're going to be doing an outdoor meeting at the Father's House Church there. But you know, we'll be going to other churches as well. Oh, okay. So, again, thank you. Think of Nehemiah will hold the one for Apostle Hargett. Think of Nehemiah. And think of Ken will hold this one for the church. Amen. So, what we do. And then, um, let me see how, um, yeah, so, well, let them go around, and uh, he got the work for Pastor Mark, yeah, he got the work for the church. On the screen, you can see the information for digital. Let anyone who brought a cell phone Come here, Nehemiah. To, to, to donate, feel free to bring it in this, into this basket. Cell phones, tablets. <clears throat> we appreciate that. God bless you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we have an awesome time. Big and Ken. Big and Ken. And uh, we got to get your... Big and Ken. Yeah, we got to get a positive cooks information. More, yeah, because maybe on one of these Saturdays coming, you know, can you come and let us know what you must Amen. We really are so blessed. You want to say something? <laughs> she said, but she's probably too overwhelmed. I'm telling you. I mean, it was so on target. And the, the intensity of what has been going on, that word was just so deep. So powerful for, for, um, for her and for myself. Yeah. Just amazing. Okay. I amazing. go. I give it to him. Kim, you can go up there. I, I mean, I was literally thinking, like, wait a minute, he wasn't here a couple days. He wasn't with us in our house, was he? <laughs> but isn't God good? Amen. Amen. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, let's clap our hands for those on YouTube. Yeah. And God bless you all. We'll upload this to Facebook later. Amen. Um, are you going?